Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to watch me build my first quadcopter. First thing I want to say is this is not a how-to. I certainly don't feel qualified enough to provide any kind of guidance on how to make the best decisions. Um, you'll certainly get to see some of the mistakes that I've made during this build. But okay, let's let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Another thing to obviously state is this video isn't in real time. It has been sped up. Just just to make perfectly clear. So first thing that I'm doing is taking all the parts out of the box. This is a QAV two fifty, but it is a Chinese copy. It's quite a lot cheaper. But for a first quadcopter, I think it's perfectly adequate. It's strong, it's light, and it's pretty affordable really. This frame actually cost me around £20, English money. As you can see, it's a carbon fibre. Uh, I say that with some hesitation. It's not proper carbon fibre for definite. It's not electrically conductive. And it's not just coated with uh, some kind of lacquer or anything. It's it's definitely not carbon fibre from the the feel of it. Though it is it is still strong, and it is light. So you'd pay your money and you'd take your choice. And I'm happy for a first quadcopter that this is what I've chosen. Okay, so everything's out of the box. It's got a top plate, bottom plate. Um, it's got the forearms. There's the plate, which is like the middle plate where you mount all the electronics and everything else. It's got the anti-vibration um, doohickeys. I don't know what the proper name is. The little rubber sort of mounts, um, which you can set a proper camera on top of another plate on the very top. It's also got four little feet, which you can hang off the arms they may get used where I intend to fly there is some longer grass where they may just help keep it out of the really messy stuff so I've got everything out of the box it's all sorted into neat little piles that just makes working on things that little bit easier so the first job is to screw in the aluminium posts they just have a screw through the middle plate directly into the actual aluminium post itself. We're using some thread lock as well just to make sure it all stays nice and secure. This is a blue version. Not 100% sure if colour necessarily means anything but this is the one that's advertised as strong but not permanent. I think the permanent one would probably be the wrong one. So yeah, do that eight times. Lastly, I quickly demonstrate the 3D tool I printed there. It's just a little hand-held um, quarter-inch drive. Put a socket on there. Um, it's a 3 8 socket. Um, and that, that's the perfect size for the hex bolts. That just makes life nice and easy for swapping different drives, essentially. Okay, so now we're getting into some frustrating parts. This is where I'm about to start fitting the arms. Not sure if the tolerances are a bit too tight or whether it's just a bit of um, bad manufacturing. I guess it's just one of the uh, the downsides of, of going for the, the cheaper parts. The actual holes for the arms between the two plates and the actual arms themselves don't line up perfectly. I had to take a 3mm drill bit uh, and just deeper the holes. This gave them enough clearance for it all to be able to line up. It wasn't easy and it was quite frustrating. Didn't want to take it too far, didn't want to put an actual drill bit through the hole. Um, I didn't want to enlarge the hole at all because obviously the arms need to sit quite, quite strongly, quite sturdily onto the frame.
in real time that probably took in the region of probably two hours um, fitting them fitting one at a time adjusting them giving them very minor uh, filing with the with the drill bit essentially but eventually it did all come together and all four arms were on so now all I'm doing is putting some more thread lock onto the onto the screws. The bolts supplied were nylock bolts, which is obviously very nice. But I did I did complement that with with a bit more thread lock just to be safe, because obviously the the arms they're the, they're the bits that are going to take the most um, wear, shall we say? They're going to take all the vibrations from the motors. And in the event of any impact, which let's be honest is going to happen, they're the things that are going to take the the brunt of the shock. Once that was done, next job was to put the top of the frame together. That was nice and simple. It was essentially pulling the little plastic, uh, well rubber grommets, I guess, um, pulling them through the holes on the actual top plate and through the camera mount nice and simple and that's that's the the basics of the frame complete just need to put everything inside it now okay so next thing i'm going to do is actually start doing some soldering it's always fun so what i'm going to make is uh, it's just a little extension essentially from uh, my power distribution board pdb it's um going to bring the actual JST connector which connects into the battery it's going to bring that out of the back of the quadcopter um, and pretty much just sort of dangle freely it's a fairly simple process gather your wire gather your JST together I put them into my helping hands device um, use that basically just to help hold all the bits together makes life that a little bit easier. You might notice I've also got the female side of the JST connected into the male side of the JST. That just provides a little bit of protection just in case the parts get a little bit too hot during the soldering. If there's any kind of um, looseness developing in the plastic, having the male and female sat together like that, it will ensure that they sit properly. So tin the wire, put some solder into the actual JST connector itself. You may have spotted I'm actually using some rather cheap and nasty lead free solder. This is not what I'd recommend at all. So with the back left I do have some much nicer solder with actual with, with lead in. Um, but this takes quite a lot of solder and I just used it as an opportunity to get rid of some poor quality solder. So once you've tinned your wire and I guess tinned the actual JST itself, so filled that with, with solder, bring the two parts together, remelt the solder. Uh, you don't need to add any more at this stage, it should be should be plenty, and bring the two parts together. Let them cool down so they go solid. Once it has all nicely cooled down, you've done both sides, done your positive and your negative side, you can actually bring in some heat shrink, pop that over the uh, connectors, over the actual end. I use two individual pieces, obviously one over positive, one over the negative. You can just use a single larger one and slightly envelop the end of the JST, whichever way you want to do it is perfectly fine just so long as you keep the two sides separate really so there you go that was quick and easy and we'll uh, install that later on so we're on to setting up the motors now I've already started to get all the bits out these come with a separate prop adapter so you need to screw that on separately you get four of the five mil screws you get four of the seven mil screws um, and a couple of other spare screws for a different type of application but we'll not worry about them. So you take your 5mm screws and you pop them through the prop adapter 
with your screw directly into the top of the motor. Again, a bit of thread lock keeps it all nice and secure. Again, this is going to be something which takes a lot of vibration. So yep, there we go, nice and easy. So we're on to looking at the ESCs and motors now. This is actually one of my first, I wouldn't necessarily say big mistakes, but it was certainly a mistake what I did. What I'm going to do is chop um, the wires coming out of the ESC. I'm going to chop them short, which is all fine, but I'm also going to chop the wires for the motors down short which yeah it works it works perfectly well um i have actually i'm running with with two of them chopped this short but when i was kind of measuring up and offering it up i kind of decided that i needed the flexibility of the longer wires so after i'd done two of them that shot i i, I didn't do any more process is fairly simple you've seen it before I simply trimmed the wires, exposed the actual metal inside, twisted them up a little bit, tinned the wires, and then uh, just soldered it, it all together. Fairly standard stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. But yeah, as I say, I wouldn't actually do this again if I was to redo this quadcopter. That is one thing I would... Um, not have done. I'm sure it's it's perfectly good for if you're racing you need to save every gram but for my my use I'm certainly not at that standard yet and I don't think the the weight saving paid off versus the awkwardness of installing them. But hey ho lesson learned and hopefully you won't make that same mistake. So there we go, we've got the ESC and the motor in the helping hands, just offering them up. Um, each side of the, the wires is tinned, just to introduce a bit of heat to melt it all together. You'll also notice that there's no heat shrink. That's another downside of, of doing this this short. The heat shrink would have obviously got too hot and, and contracted before you could have got it into the right place. You'll see later on what I did to resolve that. Okay, offering it up onto the quadcopter, you can see that the ESC protrudes quite a long way into the actual body of the quadcopter, which is less than ideal. This is all four of the motors soldered onto the ESCs. You can probably make out that two of them have the uh, the full length of their wire is still attached on. They're, they are opposing sides and ends of the quadcopter, so the slight weight really isn't going to make any difference at all. You'll also notice I've soldered them onto a power distribution board. It's just a, a very basic uh, power distribution board. just keeps things that little bit neater. I've also soldered on here the XT60. That's just uh, soldered straight onto the power distribution board and we're just doing a bit of a, an offering up. So next up, what we're going to do is resolve the issue I mentioned earlier. Um, we're going to use some liquid electrical tape. This stuff's fantastic. It goes on just like a thick gooey sort of paste almost. Um, you leave it for a few hours and it'll set into pretty much like, like its name suggests, into electrical tape. It's fully waterproof. It sticks to the cables properly. It's just fantastic for situations like this.
So in this final little section, I'm offering up the 3D printed parts which I've made. So what I've got is a little case for the NAS32, and I've also printed out a little case for the PDB. These are just to offer that little bit of extra protection. I kind of appreciate that I'm going to be crashing this at some point, and probably a few times if we're honest. So these just give that little bit of extra protection. I'm going to wrap this video up here. This has been part one of my build of my quadcopter. Hopefully you found it interesting watching me, a complete noob, do this. And hopefully you'll join me shortly for part two, where we finish the build off. And possibly even take it for a little fly. Hope to see you again shortly. See you soon.